The Aston Martin Valhalla, one of the new hypercars from the British manufacturer, has already been shown several times. Each time a little is adjusted, but it is not completely finished yet. Today we learned that the car will get even more power than we already thought, and it will become clear what the interior of the Super Aston will look like. Do you also no longer see the wood for the trees when it comes to the new supercars and hypercars from Aston Martin? Don't worry, we can shed some light on the matter. Aston Martin launches three mid-engine supercars over a period of several years. The first of these, the Aston Martin Valkyrie, is already in production and is by far the most expensive and exclusive of the bunch. With a price tag of several million and a V12 with more than 1,000 horsepower, this is a true extremist who actually belongs on the road at most according to the letter of the law. This is followed by the Aston Martin Valhalla, which we could once again admire live. The Valhalla is not finished yet, but little by little we will learn more about it. The third and final step in Aston Martin's supercar offensive is the new Vanquish. That will also be a supercar with a mid-engine. But that car will move its price tag a lot less towards hypercar regions than the other two. Back to the middle step, the Aston Martin Valhalla. It is a good step lower on the ladder than the Valkyrie, but with an intended price tag of 700,000 euros excluding taxes, a ton less than previously predicted, it is still well priced. The car does not have a V12, but the 4.0 litre by turbo V8, known from other Aston Martins and AMG. The British have tackled that block firmly. Previously, 750 HP of petrol power was mentioned. Now that has already grown to 800. The V8 in the Valhalla is part of a new plug-in hybrid powertrain with two electric motors that produces a total power of 1,012 HP, 62 more than previously announced. The torque should be around 1,000 Newton meters. The petrol engine only drives the rear wheels, but the front axle can also be involved electrically in the drive. This is done in an ingenious way via a new automatic 8-speed gearbox with double clutch. According to Aston Martin, this means that the full power, including that of the front electric motor, can be sent to the rear wheels. The other way around is also possible, because in electric mode, this Super Aston is a pure front-wheel drive. He can only keep that up for 15 kilometers, but that does reduce CO2 emissions. Aston Martin is aiming for about 200 grams per kilometer, which means for Dutch buyers, that the BPM amount should remain somewhat acceptable. A carbon monocoque forms the basis, of course intended to get the right combination of impossibly high stiffness with a very low weight. In total, the Valhalla weighs 1,550 kilograms, which is indeed not much for a plug-in hybrid with a V8. The sprint from 0 to 100 is done in 2.5 seconds. The top speed is about 350 kilometers h. With those numbers, the Valhalla is very similar to that other plug-in hybrid supercar, the Ferrari SF90. When asked, Aston Martin acknowledges that that car has regularly been mentioned in the development of the Valhalla, but does not call the SF90 a direct competitor. We are looking to the future, so we want the Valhalla to surpass today's SF90, said Simon Inglefield, global head of personalization and special sales at Aston Martin. Inglefield is closely involved with the Valhalla, because he is definitely special. There will only be 999, is the idea. That is considerably more than the 150 Valkyries, but still not much. Compared to the previous introduction in 2020, a lot has changed at the Valhalla. Take a good look at the shape of the still voluptuous flanks, the now straight-cut windshield, and the new nose and butt. In fact, only the basic recipe is still intact. That exterior is not new in itself, because we already saw it in 2021. That green car was the exterior concept. The grey one is now the interior concept. This car therefore also has an interior, unlike the earlier one. So Aston Martin takes potential buyers, the press and other interested parties hand in hand through the development process, with the Valhalla becoming a little more finished. According to Inglefield, the exterior is 90% done, while the interior is 80% done. It is already partly clear what will change. For example, the prototype still has adjustable pedals and a fixed seat, which is part of the carbon fiber structure. The production model will just get an adjustable seat because this reportedly saves weight and provides comfort. Although the numbers suggest otherwise, 
Comfort is indeed a theme with the Valhalla. The car has matrix-led headlights, two-zone climate control, an infotainment system with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and even adaptive cruise control. Nevertheless, a very sporty feeling predominates in the interior. The seat is impossibly low. The steering wheel is flattened at the top and bottom, and the view to the outside is minimal. That makes some doubts about Aston Martin's idea that this should be a daily usable car. Unlike the Valkyrie, the Valhalla is above all an extremist, although we like to be surprised by the production model. The idea that the Valhalla would also have GT-like qualities has made us very curious about the future of Aston Martin's more traditional models. After all, we have known the brand for years as the producer of Grand Tourers with a V8 or V12 in the nose. These are models that don't consider performance as high as the proverbial banner than the Valhalla and the Valkyrie. Inglefield does not make any concrete statements about it, but emphasizes again when asked that the Valhalla is good at everything. This suggests that Aston Martin is emphatically in the direction of a real supercar builder, and more Aston Martins will be developed according to this recipe in the future. The best example is the new Vanquish, which, as mentioned, will also have a mid-engine. It promises to be a supercar of the McLaren 570S level, and therefore a relative bargain next to the Valhalla. It will appear in an even more final form next year, and should go into production in 2024.